Life Audio. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to my podcast, Billy and the Goat. I'm Billy Nancy. Please hit the subscribe button so we can stay in touch. So as you know, my son William was born one pound, 14 ounces. He was a 26-weeker. This was over 16 years ago. And he was in the NICU intensive care unit for a total of 92 days. Half of those days, 45 days, were in Virginia Beach General. The other half was at CHKD. Well, yours truly almost pulled a, a John Q to rescue my son, William, out of the, of the, of the NICU. John Q was a, a Denzel Washington movie where Denzel Washington is a dad who has a son who needs an emergency surgery, but the insurance company will not cover the cost of the surgery. It's a whole bunch of money. So he takes the hospital hostage and he's just demanding that they take care of his son. And I almost pulled a, a, a John Q. Really? We'll be right back. A powerful prayer life does not require hiking a mountain to be able to hear from God. God can meet us right in the middle of our busy lives to help, guide, and speak to us through prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, providing practical teaching and encouragement on how you can make prayer a natural and consistent part of your everyday life. I promise it won't require hiking a mountain, but you just might develop the faith to move one. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com. If you find yourself wondering how to get through the day and how to actually live out a life with faith when it is confronted all the time by the world around you, which looks really different than often your faith life does, well, then you may find yourself in need of Girl Club. I'm Cynthia Garrett, and I hope that you'll join us every week right here on Life Audio because we're just a bunch of real girls having real talk about real issues while applying real faith. So yeah, William, they decided at Virginia Beach General after 45 days that it was time for William to be transported to CHKD where he could be better served. They're bigger, better version of Virginia Beach General, which had a NICU, but it wasn't CHKD. It was like everything, the Mac Daddy, if you will, <laughs> of of caring for for kids, particularly William's size. And, you know, William was having a lot of problems before we could transport him to CHKD. One, he had to eat, he had to drink milk, all the alarms and all the bells and whistles that were going off, that were sounding off so much when he was in Virginia Beach General, those, hang, those things had to stop. So he had to get him to a certain level in order to transport him, safely transport him over to CHKD. <clears throat> so we finally got to that point. As I said, it was like 40, 45 days after being at Virginia Beach General Hospital in Virginia Beach. And they put him in an ambulance to transport him. Me and his mom were following closely behind. It's about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes drive on the interstate to get to CHKD. So we go to CHKD, we get there, and it's like everything that finally got done that we, that William accomplished for the first 45 days of his life got undone when he was at CHKD. Huge difference between hate CHKD and Virginia Beach General is size. Like at Virginia Beach General, I think there were probably about 10, 12 babies in the unit. And it was quiet and serene for the most part. But at CHKD, it was it just seemed like it was just a circus. There were so many more babies. It seemed like 25 or 30 babies 
in the room where William was, a lot more alarms, a lot more noise. It was just, just really, really, it just seemed really, really busy. It's the complete opposite of what we were used to, what William was used to. It just seemed very chaotic. The worst part was what it did to William and how he felt. You know, the alarm started going off. They seemed to be louder at CHKD. He wouldn't eat. So, and he's already, you know, a preemie. He's already only a couple of pounds. So this is huge, you know. He wasn't eating anymore and the alarms are going off. And let me tell you something, it, it put fear not only in him but also in his parents you know me and 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 his mother <clears throat> and in loved ones so i took it upon myself i called our doctor his williams doctor at that, that, that was still at virginia Beach general and called him and i said doc i said it's crazy over here it's so much different it's loud there's so many more babies. There's so many more doctors, nurses. I mean, it's just, I got to get William out of here. This is, it's too much. It's, I don't think this is, was the right decision. We need to come back over there with you, more serene, quiet. I said, if I have to, I'll pick him up myself and, and put him, you know, in the car and drive him back over to you. Now in my head, that was the right thing, but that's probably one of the stupidest things that was that I could have done. And fortunately, of course, the doctor at Virginia Beach General said calmly, Mr. Yancey, you know, that's the last thing you want to do. I understand your concern. William has taken maybe a step back, but I assure you, you know, contact one of the nurses, the doctor, talk to them about your concerns and you know it has everything to do with him being in a different environment to ride over it's upsetting to him he's going to be okay everything's going to work out and you know what he was exactly right you know that's why he's doing what he's doing that would have been the worst thing that I could have possibly done in a situation like that especially in a situation like that it's the last thing I wanted to do you know, our message for today, we're talking about patience. And I certainly was being impatient. All I could see was like the immediate. I wasn't thinking long term. I wasn't thinking intel intelligently, of course. I was thinking save my son. And the way that I wanted to save my son was get him out of that room. But fortunately, the, uh, the crew, the nurses, the doctor, wow, incredible. At, uh, at C CHKD, I settled down and listened to them and, you know, they, us out, William out safely, healthfully and lovingly. And William is, shoot, he, he's almost 17 now. So glad I didn't make that mistake. We want to be patient, you know, to, despite how bad things may get, how bad things may seem. We still have to be patient and, you know, not just regarding our health, but, you know, for me, even relationships, I think back to a number of my relationships, particularly my marriages, you know, they're not, it's not who God had for me personally. If it's who God had for me, then it would have been different circumstances, but even relationships I've had, I rushed into one night stands, craziness, you know, when I was young, that's not who God had for me. And I in no way should have been involved with many of the people that I was with because I was impatient, because I wanted whatever it was then now, I don't want to wait. It's about being patient. So not just with my son's health and survival, but, you know, 
my marriages suffered because I was impatient, because I had bad habits. And person to person, we weren't the best for each other. She's not just relationships, relationships with people, but relationships regarding money, financials, in college. I was bound and determined to have credit cards. I had credit card debt. Why? Because I had, geez, I had to have certain clothes, things, a certain type of car to promote a certain image because I lacked the discipline and the patience to save up and buy with cash. So what did I do? I had a, I think I had a Visa card. I had a MasterCard. I had a Cheese uh, Discover card. I'm out to dinner with my girlfriend at the time and another couple. I go to pay with one of the credit cards and it gets declined. And that is embarrassing behind, you know, just so embarrassing, right? Because I don't have enough money in my account. You know, just because you have the plastic doesn't mean you have the money, right? To back it up, I maxed it out. I wasn't keeping good track. I didn't have good common sense discipline with my with my finances. Because I was impatient, it took me a, a long time to learn, you know, good patience, particularly with money. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Randy. And we're from Salty Saints Podcast. We're a theology and apologetics podcast. We hope to better equip you to be salt and light for your community. Uh, we hope that we can help you to go out and be a reflection of Jesus Christ to those around you, uh, to your friends and your family, and to especially to those that do not know Christ. To find out more, subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Hey, Dr. Bill Sinyard here, host of Gospel Rant. There's nothing like the rant out there, not your basic Bible study. There's plenty of those. We're scratching the text or topic in a deeper, fresher way, shame-free. We are not going to tell you what you should believe or should do. It's all about asking better questions and starting more relevant, fun dialogues. Our passion is to help frustrated, beat-up Christians hear the music again. No matter who you are, come join us. Gospel Rant. You know, we're building an app where geez it's been we've been building it i think it's about two years now because many of you know that i built a workout program called anabo and we've been servicing lots of people all ages for a number of years but but before we got to the point where we're building app now i almost She's lost all the rights to Anabo because I was going to be, actually I was going to be an employee to another business owner who owned a gym in Norfolk. We were going to bring Anabo to their facility. As a company, we had a valuation of $50,000 at that time. The deal was I would have lost all the rights to Anabo, and I would have been working for them, which is crazy, <laughs> which is not what, you know, were the intentions or it wasn't, it wasn't the goal of Anabo it was not for me to sell to someone else and work for them. That was never the intention. That was never the goal ever, but it came real close to doing that. Unfortunately, my best friend, David, his wife, who were you know, they're part of our team of building our app. We said, no, it's not a good fit. So it never happened, fortunately. You know, as as eager and as determined and as much as I wanted Anaba to succeed and build the app and, and serve others and serve our community and the world, I had to be patient. 
I had to be patient. And that wasn't the only time I almost lost my patience. I've had a, a, a few of my clients that asked me to close my gym and work for them at a gym they wanted to open for themselves. They said I'd make more money. You know, I've had these opportunities from different people that worked. It was everything that worked for them in their favor, but not necessarily for mine. And the last thing I wanted to do was to be an entrepreneur and all of a sudden go work for someone else who was going to retire from, you know, their job so that they could just walk to their mailbox and pick up a paycheck out of their mailbox from me doing all the work, you know? So it's so important to be patient. I've learned that over the years. Unfortunately, in our society today, there's a lot of instant swipe right, swipe left mentality, instant gratification. There's so many different things that you can get just by snapping your finger, just by push, pushing the button. And anything really, really worth it, it's gonna take time. It's gonna take perseverance. It's gonna take patience. We need patience. I came close to moving my gym. I've been here 19 years. And I almost made the mistake of moving my gym to a more affluent area where I thought that it would be make more business sense and make more money to move to that area. That would have been a nightmare as well. Our scripture for the day, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Psalm 37, verse 7. We have to be patient. We have to be patient. Whether it's health, relationships, credit, business, goals, we have to be patient. God wants us to be patient. It's hard for a reason. It's hard for a reason. As of late, I've been able to, to have better responsibility, discipline with my financials because I've been patient. Things are happening now that never would have happened before because I was too impatient. William would not be here today had I been impatient and tried to take him out of many years ago. My relationships, a number of my relationships were fail or failures because I was impatient. I was with people I shouldn't have been with. God didn't want me be, to be with. I was impatient. College credit cards, accruing debt because I couldn't wait. I had to have that purchase right away. Our app, we almost lost it, it, the rights to the app over a meager figure. Peanuts. Peanuts compared to where we're headed. Peanuts compared to the number of people, not just in our community, but all over the world, that it will help. Be patient. That's what God wants. If you're down, if you're depressed, if you're hurting, if you're anxious about your situation, don't give up. Keep fighting, keep praying, stay faithful. Believe God will make it happen because God always comes through, always. Things happen the way they're supposed to, when they're supposed to. Things don't happen the way they're supposed to when they're supposed to, when we're impatient. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's what God wants us to do. Thank you for joining me today. God bless. Allow me to take a moment to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you will find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and much, much more. 
It's a crazy world out there, moms and dads, and raising our kids to stand strong in the faith is tough. I'm Katherine Seegers, host of Christian Parent Crazy World, a podcast that answers the questions that keep us parents up at night. Questions like, um, is it okay to question God and the Christian faith? How do I help my kids to have an authentic faith? Wait, wait a second. Is the Bible just a book written by some ancient dead guys? <laughs> yeah. For answers to these questions and more, subscribe to Christian Parent Crazy World at lifeaudio.com. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there.